Occupy Brooklyn TV. I'm Atik Zabinski. On Wednesday, December 12th, a force of 500 police officers raided the offices of Deutsche Bank in Frankfurt, Berlin, Dusseldorf. Five arrests were made, including co-Chief Executive Officer Jürgen Fitchen and Chief Financial Officer Stefan Krause. Together with 20 other employees of the bank, the officers are suspected of tax evasion, money laundering, and attempted evasion of justice. The latter charge involves the deletion of 20,000 emails that happened after the bank came under investigation. It remains to be seen whether the American government will press charges against the bank for its fraudulent foreclosures against American citizens. A new chapter has opened in the story of Hurricane Sandy recovery. For nine weeks now, ordinary citizens have been filling the gap left by all official relief agencies, helping one another as best they can. On Saturday, December 15th, the first protests against government neglect were held. At noon, people gathered in affected areas in the Rockaways and Staten Island, visited one another's homes, and shared stories. In the evening, hundreds gathered outside the home of Mayor Michael Bloomberg. We started the day at the Relief Center at 520 Clinton Avenue in Brooklyn. There, bicycle activists with the group Time's Up gathered to bring goods the 20-mile distance all the way to the far Rockaways. If we'll go to a place we know has lots of stuff, like stuff people have donated, we'll pick it up, load it on our backs and our bikes and our trailers, and then ride out to like an area we know um, is prepared to receive them. Right now we're at the church, um, which Occupy Sandy's been doing a great job coordinating uh, resources. Usually the way we run it is that we'll do these deliveries um, and then do uh, split up into teams based on what anybody wants to do. So I like to do demos, so I'll do demo, but sometimes it helps to do canvassing. We want to point out the connection between what's going on in the climate and the use of fossil fuel. And we also have fun and we feel good about it and it's a beautiful day. So it's going to be a great ride. Bikes are still the only way to reliably get places efficiently down there with the uh, the transportation infrastructure is so totally fucked. Facing a crisis like this, the first response of the administration is to follow a, a page from the Karl Rove Katrina handbook. Everybody knows Karl Rove famously advised Bush not to send get FEMA in there, not to actually uh, fix the environment, remediate it as much as to make sure that the houses became dilapidated so they could put new houses up at developer prices. We have energy bikes in the Rockaways. I believe we have it um, in a medical center to keep the power going by human power. It's pretty much a human power generator. So basically, um, we bring the energy bikes out. It's just a bicycle, pedal. Um, the power is uh, created to uh, charge the cell phones, the computers. And it was really useful, actually, as of day one after Sandy, because people didn't have power. We need a better transportation infrastructure so regular folk can get down there and back, not just people with cars, so people don't feel isolated. Remember the old timers that are, that are down there that are isolated. That's the biggest thing I'm worrying about, are the folks that aren't connected to family and friends that are, that are on the fifth floor of a building. We learned it in Zakati, mutual aid. We brought it into the Occupy Sandy, and now we have to continue to rebuild the world around some of this model. I am on my way to march and let the people know that we have people living with more, no lights, no heat. Would you join us to march and let the people know that we need help, especially Bloomberg? Join me and march. Well, I'm a part of the community and I'm actually working with Occupying Sandy and I'm here for a change. Well, the purpose of today is to let everybody know, personally, Mayor Bloomberg, to know that we're not going to stand around and we're not going to do anything. We're going to march, we're going to say, we're going to yell, we're going to scream, whatever it takes for him to open up his door and get his behind out here and do something for the Rockaways. We're going to do it today and everybody that's present here today um, is a show of that. Um, I'm here to make a stand for my community, just to show my support. Uh, you know, actions speak louder than words, and I'm tired of just talking. I'm, it's, I'm here to make a movement so that we'll have change in Far Rockway. I'm here to represent the community and make a change happen because Mayor Bloomberg is really not doing anything about it. I just wanted to help because I'm tired of sitting down, doing nothing. So every day I come downstairs and ready to help something ready to help with something, make a change, make it happen. Okay, first and foremost, I'd like to thank everyone that is here, that is tired of just using our mouths and actually gonna use our bodies to make a stand for what it is that 
We as Rockaway residents believe it. This is the story, not that told. Rapid repair so clean up the mold. This is a story not getting old. Rapid repairs will clean up the mold. Things we have people that are sick from the mold that's in the houses. Um, we have people that are still without electricity, uh, heat. Uh, we just need we need help. We need someone to step in right now. Bluebird, why are you chilling? You should be rebuilding. It's Mayor Bloomberg, you know, get us the items, the things that we need in the community, but he's vetoing everything, and uh, it's not fair to Far Rockaway. In Manhattan, they fixed everything. Why can't they do it for Far Rockaway? And all our area was destroyed, and they're doing everything outside of our area, and they're not doing nothing for us. I mean, they're giving us flash, flashlights and, and candles and stuff. We was out of life for three weeks. I feel like they just forgot about us. They just went over Far Rockaway as a whole. Bloomberg, why are you chilling? You should be rebuilding. FEMA, why are you chilling? You People are getting tired about seeing FEMA and the, the, the mayor and the Red Cross pat themselves on the back on in the media while people here in the communities are still living without power and any mold. We applied for FEMA and, uh, you know, insurance companies and things like that. So far, a couple of us been denied. Uh, there's no movement in anything. We haven't received any funds. And right now I'm staying at a live ministry at 1050 Beach 21st Street, which is my home church. Thank God for somewhere that could keep us up right now. I've only lived in Rockway for five years. And I, in those five years, I've started to understand is that Rockway for such a long time has been marginalized and isolated, yeah. both physically and politically. Yeah. We've had hospitals closed, we've had school closings happen, at the basics, education, medical, everything you could think of. And it's about time that Rockway got some of the attention that, that it needed. And it's a damn shame that it took a tragedy and a disaster for it to happen, but it's the first time that I really see people coming together, both from outside and inside Rockway, so let's make it happen. Tell Mayor Bloomberg, let the money through. We are ready and we're coming for you. Tell Mayor Bloomberg, let the money through. We are ready and we're coming for yeah. you. I will tell Mayor Bloomberg to get his lazy butt up and do something about Far Rockaway before I kick his butt. Rockaway see you. Rockaway see you. Rockaway here. Rockaway here. Rockaway United. Rockaway United. We have no fear. We're done with the talking. We need the march. We need everyone to see that, you know, Rockaway should not be taken for granted. And we're serious about what it is we're doing. We want that change. And we want them to see that, you know, we have people with class, people of etiquette, people that have a brain and a mind and want a difference for the community, not just, you know, people living in the projects and, you know, just have us forgotten about. We're, we're bigger than that. And we want everyone to know that Rockaway will make a stand for what it is that we want. get together as a community like we did today and let them show let's show them that we need you know that we are here we are human we are people we have feelings we breathe the same air as they do yeah, right. together we could do a lot yes. we can march these streets nobody can stop us we are unstoppable like we said we have no fear so I hope that I'll see your faces here helping these neighbors, our neighbors, because we live in the same place and everybody's in the same situation. So let's get together and help each other out. This is the way how we're going to make Far Rockaway a better place. Let's rebuild! Let's rebuild! Let's rebuild! So right after Sandy, we came to the house and, you know, basically the first floor, you know, we lost everything inside the house and, you know, we got flooded by Sandy. 
and we were not worried at the beginning because you know we figure we have flood insurance uh, the problem is that the flood insurance is taking a long time to you know give us some money to start repairing the house they say now that's going to be by uh, mid of january when we uh, actually get the money from them and fema won't help us in that time because fema says that we do have flood insurance so you know they cannot help us so they actually refer us to the small business administration for a loan, but the Small Business Administration uh, rejected our, our petition for loans and they sent us back to FEMA. And uh, the problem is that the flood insurance is only, is only covers the structure of the house, it doesn't cover the contents. So actually the flood insurance is not going to pay for all the furniture we lost, for all the beds, mattresses, uh, nothing that we lost inside the house, it's only going to pay to repair the house. You know, so between Sandy and middle of January is a long time and, you know, we had to do something and that's why the guys from Occupy Sandy came and gave us a hand, you know, doing the, the demolition of the house, you know, trying to create a safe environment inside, free of mold. So, hi, my name is Lynn, this is my home. I bought it six years ago. Now you'll see it's just, there's nothing left in there. Um, and I, I, like I said before, I can't really move forward. There's just, there's... There's no money, my insurance isn't coming through, and I've done what I can do, and I'm at a stalemate now. I can't go any further. Right now, it's just a nightmare. Um, my whole family's all split up. We are like, I have split up in all different relatives' houses. It completely flooded my first level, and we got about two feet of water on the second floor of our home. I would stand next to it because we didn't have an attic. I wouldn't be talking to you tonight. The water line was the. This is the water line. Right next to your head is the water line. That's the water line in my house. Um, this whole place had to be gutted. Um, just from I've I've visited Slava a couple of times, and this this plank was just put down a couple of days ago. The beams had to be restructured. Um, now I, you, we видите that I have a range. All bedrooms here, все спальни здесь. Я не имею куда идти. Я не she has no place to go. She can't live here because she's she, You need to have this place vacant for three months so that the house can dry, so that you can remediate the mold. So she can't live here. I'm having all kinds of problems with the insurance companies. Um, they underwrote my policy like three times. I'm going around and around in circles. Because I have flood insurance, FEMA is waiting for the flood insurance to say what they cover, what they don't cover. But right now, I'm fortunate enough to have rapid repairs from New York City in the house, working on the electric and the plumbing. Before they would do that, I had to get a company, ATEC Construct Construction and Environmental, to come in and rectify the mold. So they sprayed the house three times, ripped up my floors, ripped my house into shambles, so when you go inside, you can see there is some minor progress being made. So there is hope out there. My flood insurance, when I called back, they said, your house has been assessed. We're waiting for an engineer because your house burnt down. <laughs> I assured them that my house did not burn down. Um, homeowners came, did an inspection, then called me and told me, well, you're not covered, you have no winds. I don't know why they sent the adjuster to start with. Flood insurance was 28 days until they came. When they came, I was told it would be at least another four weeks until we get any kind of report. Um, my mortgage company will not release advance funds. They won't do anything until you get a final report. We're seven weeks right now on a sectional. Mom has the left, I have the right. We've been fighting with FEMA. I mean, they basically told us the first round that we didn't have enough damage. We had water through the basement, two and a half feet, three feet on the first floor. Everything is destroyed. And they told us, you know, not enough damage. Then we went back and appealed, and they said, well, you don't have flood insurance, therefore you shouldn't get anything. So, I mean, that's where we're at now, because, you know, we've appealed that, and, you know, there's just nobody coming back with any answers. So we have no idea what's going on. And thank God we have, you know, the rapid repair, so we're kind of getting some of the major things done. Yeah. This way we can at least stop the mold. We've at least brought people in to spray. The plumber's here now, you know, putting in the heat, so we can at least get that going. And then, uh, depending on how much things cost is, you know, the next step. FEMA's given us a whopping $2,400 for two months' rent. Find an apartment where they're not price gouging, where they'll take a pet. Uh, it's, it's insanity. I called Hilton Garden Inn last night. 
no rooms available till after January. And if you have a pet, they will charge you $75 a day out of pocket because FEMA is not covering that. So there were several different houses that burnt down in this location. Uh, my fiance and I did some volunteering here in the, in the early weeks. And uh, there was an 80 something year old woman that lost everything. Uh, we dug in looking for her belongings. Uh, the neighbor, the man, he lost five of his cats. Uh, he was also searching for things that he could salvage. And uh, the siding on the adjacent house also had their siding completely melted from the heat. Yeah, most of our help is volunteers, people from out of state, people in Staten Island that weren't hit. The volunteers have been great. They've, we've had about three or four crews in over the couple of weeks to do different things. And I mean, it makes a difference of where we are today. We would never be there without them. So, you know, God bless them. We need to get back here. This is where we live. We go to school here. We get everything, all our food here. This is our life. Borough president has a town hall meeting, thousand people, more people outside because it was packed to capacity. We were gonna get answers. Our answer from him was, what can I tell you? I can't help you, there's nothing I could do. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We okay, really thank you. It. I appreciate you coming around. Right, it's you. nice to be heard. After their respective actions on Staten Island and the Rockaways, activists converged in Manhattan, outside the home of Mayor Michael Bloomberg, to voice their grievances. In a well-established pattern, NYPD barricaded the entire length of the north side of 79th Street between 5th and Madison and allowed no one but building residents to use the public sidewalk. On this occasion, police also ordered protesters across the street behind barricades by Central Park. When protesters marched across the streets, police repelled them two blocks and made at least two arrests, including live streamer Jack Amico. While held to the ground by several police officers, Amico was tortured by a community relations officer who took his foot and twisted it. Hurricane Sandy is not just a hurricane. It is a product of, it is a product of erratic weather patterns. Erratic weather patterns. Caused by climate change. Caused by climate change. This hurricane. This hurricane. Also fell on top of. Also fell on top of. A whole set of other crises. A whole set of other crises. It hit hardest. It hit hardest. The people already dealing with. The people already dealing with. Those crises. Those crises. There is the enormous threat. There is the enormous threat. That this will be used as an excuse. That this will be used as an excuse. To knock down people's homes, to knock down people's homes, and replace them with luxury condos, and replace them with luxury condos. So we're here to fight back. So we're here to fight back. We came here to talk to the mayor. We came here to talk to the mayor. We figured he was here. We figured he was here. He lives right over there. He lives right over there. In that mansion. In that mansion. He's the one standing in the way. He's the one standing in the way of emergency relief. Of emergency relief. So, we're going to sing a little song. As a legal observer, we object to the, the little gateway, the little power alley. We believe that shouldn't take place. As long as people are allowed to walk it back and forth on the sidewalk, protesters should be allowed to also. I want to thank everybody for coming out here on this cold night. For coming out here on this cold night. But sadly, there are many people. But sadly, there are many people. That live through cold nights every night children crawling around in moldy apartments and moldy homes. Little children crawling around in moldy apartments and moldy homes. Who face a future. Who face a future. Of permanent respiratory trouble. Of permanent respiratory trouble. I wonder. I wonder. Where was Mayor Bloomberg? Where was Mayor Bloomberg? Right after the storm. Right after the storm. It was more important. It was more important to run a marathon. To run a marathon. To use generators. To use generators. To take bottled water. To take bottled water. Away from the people who needed it. Away from the people who needed it. We've come out today. We've come out today. To send a message. To send a message. From all the community. From all the communities. Hit by Sandy. Hit by Sandy. That on December 31st. That on December 31st. Everyone. 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 Everyone will return home. Everyone will return home. After that. And after that. And after that. We want. We want. A rebuilding. A rebuilding. That includes all of us. That includes all of us. 
if he doesn't meet his deadline, because then we'll be back. Because then we'll be back. Because then we'll be back. So you're in the way. Tell him what the Let's go. Let's go. So you're blocking pedestrian traffic. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You're blocking pedestrian traffic. So you're blocking pedestrian traffic. So you're blocking pedestrian traffic. Folks, you're blocking pedestrian traffic. Please make way for people to walk by. The only people are you. Nobody else is here besides us. We're not here for you. Folks, you got to leave it alone. I'll give you that to you. They don't Anything, we're just stepping out. You know, sir, we got off the go street, guys, we got on the sidewalk. Keep now, this is not sir. good enough. So, tell me which street, come on, sir, keep going, and keep I'll going. go to it. Which can't number? Block the whole sidewalk like this. Wait, hold on, let me record it so people don't act crazy. So, which come street on, is okay for you? Let's keep going, keep going. Okay, but I want to know when I'm going to stop driving down my road. Let's go, 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 let yeah. Why are you two there now instead of blocking off the street? Because I have to be here for you guys. Come on. No, 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 you're here for Bloomberg right now. Right now you're for Bloomberg. This is a worldwide thing. Oh, this yeah. It's not just us. Oh, we realize this it. Thank you very much. This is all over the planet. And oh, yeah. And people all over the planet are unhappy. You have to listen. You can't keep repressing. It doesn't work. At the end, it's going to explode guys, thank you very much. in your face. Thank you very much. No, no thank yous here. Let's talk about it. Maybe if you took a second to think about why we are here, you would take a step back and allow us to speak on behalf of thousands of people in struggling communities who are still without heat and power and are living in homes that are being infested with mold. Maybe just then you would ease up on your oppressive nature and disobey an order once in a while when it is completely unlawful. We have a right to speak on behalf of all the people who can't be here because they are confined to their homes. And you are all a disgrace once again tonight that you would stand out here and waste your time babysitting us when there are thousands of people who could use your help and your able bodies to make this a lot easier. Sandy is not over. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks again for watching. We're going to go off cable TV for about three months, but we will continue to broadcast on YouTube slash Occupy Public Access TV. So be sure to check out our channel and subscribe to be notified every time we upload something new. Thanks again for watching. I'm Atik Sabinski.